Enfin, une, une petite euh, précision en ces temps de, de confusion post-Covid. Well, because of all the confusion that there's been after the pandemic, after the lockdowns and the theaters closing, I want to remind that a film is meant to be screened on a large screen. Of course, there are TV films that are masterpieces. But what makes a film special is it's being shown on a large screen and it's directing its time, its boldness, its form are dictated by this. And it's all the more relevant for us to celebrate Kelly Reichert because she really thinks her film in terms of narrative of space and time for the large screen. screen. So we are really happy that she accepted this uh, celebration and uh, th that she will give a master class before the ceremony. So we're all now looking forward to discovering uh, the selection done by Paolo Moretti and his selection committee. Thank you uh, to the Forum des Images and to the SRF. Before starting, I wanted to thank uh, the Kansans team who's uh, always accompanied us in a wonderful way. And now I want to invite uh, the selection committee. It's not just one person's work, but I really want also to invite my committee with me. Je tenais à remercier évidemment euh, tous nos partenaires et mécènes que vous voyez derrière moi. I also moi, want voilà, to thank all our partners et, uh, and sponsors. Le CNC et euh, deux partenaires and the CNC euh, and two uh, et BNP Paribas qui sont historical ici, sponsors, qui sont France Télévisions and BNP Paribas who's been Merci. supporting us very faithfully three years. Before starting, um, I wanted you to know that exceptionally, it's only the feature films that are going to be announced, the short films and the medium length things will be announced next week. So you already know the opening film, Scarlet by Pietro Marcello. As you know, it's a great honor to welcome the film for this opening of the 54th edition. That's his first film shot in French. It's a fall fable that's marked by magical realism in which Pietro explores a new territory, both aesthetically and poetically, but he maintains some of the stylistic devices of his former films, like the love of film and also the use of archive footage, which gives to the film a, a timeless aspect. It's at the same time dated and extremely modern. The next film is 1976 by Manuela Martelli. That's a very ambitious directorial debut of a Chilean director that takes place during the first years of Pinochet's dictatorship. 
It's a political thriller with a very tense and subtle realization in a personal and a very anti-naturalistic uh, mise-en-scene. A Lagua is from Spain. Um, the water. So we've been following uh, Elena Lopez Riera for a while, and her first feature film is mystical, sensorial, and with a very documentary-like approach about a myth of uh, some women disappearing in a Spanish village. And that's the confirmation of the emergence of a new voice in contemporary European cinema. And they said, uh, the dam al Sad is a film by Ali Sherry. It's the first feature film of uh, the visual artist Ali Sherry, who happens to be opening today his installation at Venice uh, Biennale. It's a hypnotic film shot in Sudan. And it's a political fable about the power of imagination and the ability of creating an inner world in a territory in complete turmoil. The Super 8 Years is the first film shot by the writer Annie Arnaud with her son, David Arnaud Briot. And like in her novel, she gives a universal dimension to a personal story using the material of her family films that she shot in Super 8 between 72 and 80. To one and with a magnificent text that she's written on purpose and it's both an intimate social and political object Ashkan by Youssef Shebi it's a first feature film that's fascinating both visually and because of its religious and political content it's a metaphysical crime movie that takes place in the chaotic decay of post-revolutionary Tunisia, and it also reveals an extremely promising actress. Then The Five Devils by Léa Misius. It's anchored in the oppressive surrounding of the Alp Mountains. It's a marvelous and mysterious second feature film that plays with the power of family bonds and mad love. It has a touch of fantasy and is uh, with the glowing uh, performance of Adel Exarchopoulos. The Humani Corporis Fabrica by Verena Paravel and Lucien Castan Taylor. It's a documentary that explores deeply hospitals and the cores that embody it. It goes constantly back and forth inside and outside the human body and the medical cores. The film navigates between different genres, science fiction, drama, abstract art, and social realism. Then Continental Drift South by Lionel Bayer. It's a political comedy that's at the same time light and serious by the Swiss director. It challenges wittily today's Europe, its cosmopolitanism, its institutions, and its deep essence. Ennis Man by Mark Jenkins. It's a masterful tour de force, both visually and in sound terms. Mark Jenkins is in Cannes for the first time, and he reinvents the conventions of experimental cinema and of genre movies of the 70s. It's a psychological, metaphysical, and ecological film about a woman caught up by her memories. Falcon Lake by Charlotte Le Bon. That's a first Canadian feature film. It's a love and ghost story that's both tender and cruel. It's a sensitive and inspired snapshot of teenage as a suspended moment of the kind of experience that can mark one's life. 
Now we go on with Fogo Fatwa, Willow the Wisp by João Pedro Rodrigues. It's an unexpected musical fantasy by João Pedro Rodrigues, a political and erotic fairy tale in which a prince discovers the everyday life of a fire station. Then Funny Pages by Owen Klein. It's produced by the Safdie brothers with the photography of Sean Price Williams. It's a very cutting, humorous debut film about a young cartoonist, and it distorts the conventions of teen movies to depict American underground culture. Then God's Creatures by Anna Rose Holmer. After the Fits, it's her second feature film co-directed with Cilla Davis, and it takes us in a beautiful immersion in an Irish fishing village with an intense performance by Emily Watson as a woman whose life is disturbed by the return of her son, played by Paul Mescal. Harkis by Philippe Faucon. Um, pursuing his body of work, Philippe Faucon tackles a subject that's generally neglected by French cinema, the place of Harkis during and after the Algerian War of Independence. The style is understated, but with extreme accuracy, he paints a deeply human collective portrait. We are delighted to welcome Philippe Foucault again at the Quinze. Then there is a special screening, Men by Alex Legrand. After a personal tragedy, a woman withdraws to the beautiful countryside, hoping to have a place to heal. But someone or something in the surrounding woods seems to be tracking her. Her underlying concerns turns into a nightmare occupied by her darkest memories and fears. After ex machina and annihilation, Alex Garland is in Cannes for the first time, and he presents a new frenzy and visionary horror movie. The Mountain by Thomas Salvador, after Vincent, this bold and singular second feature film tells the story of Pierre, played by the director himself, who's so captivated by the beauty of the Alpics that he decides not to get down anymore. So it's a fugue and an escape, poetic and fantastic, in tune with the quirky style of the director. Palm Fear by Dimitro Sukolsky Sobchuk. That's a first feature film from Ukraine that is absolutely astonishing, somewhere between a gangster film, a Greek tragedy, and a horror fall movie. It's following with the virtuoso camera charismatic protagonist. The film constructs a social and political metaphor that is terribly contemporary. Now, the Green Perfume by Nicolas Parizert. We're delighted to welcome Nicolas Parizert that we had welcomed with Alessandro Mayer in 2019. With his third feature film, he leads us between Tintin and Hitchcock in a mysterious investigation through Europe about the murder of an actor from the Comédie Française, and this will be the beautiful closing night of this edition of The Fortnight. Then Paris Memories by Alice Vinocourt. That's a poignant and personal film about an attack in Paris and the difficult resilience of the survivors. It's an investigation on an intimate and collective fragmented memory with an overwhelming performance by Virginie Fira. Then, Under the Fig Trees by Erich Sehiri. Um, this debut film takes place in a fig tree field in a harvest afternoon, and it reveals the liberated speech against the conventions of rural Tunisia that is in constant evolution. 
The rigor of the dispositive is as impressive as the actor's grace and strength. Then one fine morning by Mia Hansen Love. This is an autobiographical variation, uh, the delicate chronicle of a young woman who faces life's trials and gets back a taste for passion. With her usual mastery of mise-en-scene, Mia Hansen Love explores with reserve and elegance highly contemporary elements directing actors at the top of their art. And finally, Umbaron, a male by Fabian Hernandez. This is a directorial debut for the Colombian director, a bittersweet poetic portrait of a young man whose troubled life ends up on Bogota streets. With impressively formal density, the film that is just as mysterious as its protagonist questions in a surprising way some contemporary representation. I was saying it's the last film, but not exactly, because we have another film that comes from Asia that we have confirmed, but we cannot announce it yet for technical reasons, and we hope to be able to announce it very soon, and also the selection of short films and medium-length films that we're about to finalize. So this is the feature film selections for 2022 uh, edition, some figures and some general uh, remarks. As usual, there is a balance in this selection between following directors who really matter for us and also the original mission of the fortnight, which is to invite newcomers and directors who've never been in Cannes before. And it's the case this year, there are 18 directors out of the 24 who are presenting for the very first time a feature film in Cannes, 11 female directors. And uh, we've really tried to represent um, this value of uh, the fortnight and um, represent the world cinema. We've really been very careful to represent this diversity. Of course, French cinema is very present because it's also uh, the major country that sends us filming. We received 336 feature films, so that's the reason why uh, we have uh, so many French films if we compare it to other countries like Spain. So we are uh, very uh, looking forward to work to celebrate in this vitality. That's all for us. Are there questions? It's a special year because we know that this was your last year. How do you program? I think it's very unusual to announce that somebody leaves before they announce the election. So was it liberating for you? Uh, but at the same time, it was announced that the fortnight could change could be modified, that even the name of the section would change. What did it change for you, this coming change? I won't answer about that, the SRF, the French Directors Guild, should answer about that. As for me, uh, the way I worked is that I had the will and the devotion that I've always had for the Kansen and trying to do my best. Merci. Alors, Pardon, je vais botter un petit peu en touche parce que j'ai Thank la you. Que Sorry, I can't really reply because I think what's important today is this present edition of the fortnight and I want us to really enjoy it. And after this edition, uh, we will talk about it because this selection is beautiful and there is a celebration to come in one month. Any other questions? 
Oui, bonjour. Je voulais savoir, on en a un petit peu échangé au, au début de ma venue. Comment, comment, comment well, la situation sanitaire a, a, a I'd a like, a like to know in what way the pandemic influenced your selection. Did they send you films more than you were able to travel? Well, there is a natural change. There are more and more films that are sent through links and online, but this year we were in more normal conditions, so we were able to see many of the films in a theater, which is of course very enjoyable to be able to share this moment with the comedy. That's uh, obviously the most beautiful part of the preparation of a selection. Able to discover the films together. Do you have any other questions? How many first feature films do you really have? Not films that are in Cannes for the first time, but really debut films. There were eight of them. There are some rules that have two criteria that have to be uh, considered, like, is it the first fiction film? But we have eight of them. Another question? Bonjour, c'est Philippe Gaud de EGA.com. Je voudrais demander à M. Paolo Moretti I'd like to ask Mr. Moretti if there is a tendency this year when we see all the films that were sent to you that there were not many Asian films. Was there less Asian films that were offered to you? I wouldn't say that there was a tendency. There will be an Asian film that uh, we hope to be announcing soon uh, because we are uh, really careful about observing creation in different continents. There were many films that we really loved this year in terms of writing, directing, but then we have a limited space, so we had to make sometimes painful choices. But the continent will be present this year. And are there specific tendencies in terms of themes or not that we have noticed now? There is a great diversity in terms of themes and uh, writing. Any other questions? About the selection, you said that there is a metaphysical crime story in Tunisia after the revolution. There are other films about the, from the Arab world. Do you feel that there is a renewal or a, some dynamic in genre films in the Arab world? I am careful not to say something too general. But we were really surprised in a very positive way from uh, films that were received from this zone, and it was a great pleasure to include them in the selection. It's a mode of storytelling. Uh, the films that we selected is not representative necessarily, but it's um, the sensitivity that our committee wanted to express. So there is a desire of showing these approaches. And they, all these films have a very strong relationship with present times but transfigured, transformed. 
by the way the directors tackle the subject, uh, um, playing with the genres conventions in a very personal, original way. So I wouldn't say that there is a tendency, but there is an emergence of new voices, definitely. If I can add something, I like the idea of taking part in the history of the director's fortnight. Of course, uh, Jibril Mambeti Tukibuki, that was in the fortnight in the 70s. I wanted to congratulate you for uh, the selection that's very representative of the whole world and, as you said, very contemporary subjects. The president of the um, French Directors Guild were talking about the culture um, policy. If ever Marine Le Pen is selected last year, elected as the president of France, if this disaster happens, how will you react? Well, I'd rather not think about it, I'd say. I'm not able to answer this question now. It, it, it would be a collective uh, reaction from the Kanzen and from the SRF, so I wouldn't uh, have any um, inside myself, but all I hope that this won't happen. Well, this has happened in the history of the fortnight. Yes, it was the very birth of the fortnight. Bonjour. Uh, the Monsieur de la SRF a donné an excellent discourse sur le fait qu'une team de cinéma. We had this wonderful uh, speech about the fact that. Uh, F cinema films are made for the large screen, but you just said that you watch many of the films on a link. So I wonder how you work. Can you watch a link on a large screen all together, or are you all watch on your computers and then talk about it? It's just about your method. Of course, it's a magic to be able to send the film so easily. But maybe there's a magic of cinema that is a bit lost in this process. Well, I am uh, privileged because I work with uh, high-level professionals who are able to imagine the image above what they actually see. Of course, we can... Uh, be mistaken. Sometimes we've seen some films first on a link, and then we ask to receive a DCP to be able to watch it on a large screen. So we also are very careful and really attached to the large screen. But it's not what it doesn't alter our appreciation of films. If you want to find the list, the titles and information about the films, the press kit is available online on the website of the fortnight. Thank you very much for coming here because it's always a pleasure to see you in presence and see you very soon in Cannes. Thank you very much.